Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers the E2 stereochemistry with halocyclohexanes. The E2 transition state has special geometrical requirements. We saw this in a prior video. The leaving group and the beta proton abstracted have to be in the same plane for the E2 transition state. For cyclohexyl halides, you need to consider both chair conformations. Here's an example. Chlorocyclohexane has an alpha position, and then there are two beta positions within the ring. Let's draw a chair cyclohexane for this molecule. In this chair cyclohexane, the chlorine is equatorial, and the alpha position is the carbon it's attached to. The hydrogens on this beta position are not coplanar with the chlorine. Neither one of these hydrogens is in the same plane as chlorine. If that's not clear, build a model of this and look down the bond between the alpha and the beta position. You'll see the dihedral angle between the chlorine and each of these protons in the beta position is 60 degrees, not 180 degrees as it needs to be. The other beta position over here, closest to us, has the same problem. They don't have the right geometry. They are similarly not coplanar with the chlorine. Therefore, there are no protons coplanar with the chlorine in this particular conformation, and therefore, this conformation is unreactive in E2 reactions. This is a theme with halocyclohexanes. When the halogen is equatorial, they're unreactive. This molecule can chair flip, and the chair flipped version of this, the other chair conformation, has the chlorine in an axial position here. The alpha position is here, the beta positions are here and here next door. Now in this case, there actually are two protons that are coplanar with chlorine. One of them is shown here. The axial hydrogen here lies in the same plane as the chlorine atom. This relationship is called transdiaxial because both groups, the hydrogen and the chlorine, are trans to each other and they're also both axial. This is one of the relationships you'll look for when you're trying to pick out protons in the beta positions that are reactive in E2. The other relationship is with the other beta proton that's axial. Here's another proton that could be abstracted by a base because it's transdiaxial with the chlorine leaving group. Therefore, E2 reactions are possible from this chair conformation leading to a cyclohexene molecule. Let's look at another example that's a little bit more complicated. This example illustrates how some isomers can't form in E2 reactions due to transition state requirements. As the example, let's look at this chlorocyclohexane that's substituted with a methyl group. The molecule has an alpha position that the chlorine is attached to, and then there's two distinct beta positions on the ring. Here's one of the chair conformations for this molecule. In this particular chair conformation, the chlorine is equatorial, and the methyl is equatorial as well. This chair conformation has no protons that are coplanar with chlorine. Therefore, this conformation is unreactive in E2 reactions. If we chair flip this molecule, we get to this conformation where we have alpha and beta positions shown here. Here, there is one beta proton that's transdiaxial with chlorine. This proton is trans to chlorine and it's also axial. These atoms lie in the same plane and therefore that proton is reactive in an E2 reaction. However, if you look at the other beta position, the methyl group is occupying the axial position. There's no proton in the axial position on this beta carbon. Therefore, the molecule can't react in an E2 reaction through this beta position. When a strong base reacts with this molecule, it will only deprotonate the beta position that's transdiaxial with the chlorine that leads to only one alkene product in this reaction. The other alkene that you might worry about, this cyclohexene, is actually more stable, but it's not a possible product in this reaction because there's no transition state that'll allow the bond to form between the carbons in this alkene. Let's look at another example that shows how some isomers can't form an E2 due to transition state requirements. This molecule has a bromo group in the alpha position as well as several unique beta positions. There are actually three unique beta positions in this molecule. If we draw this in a chair cyclohexane form, we can see the alpha position here as well as the beta position in the ring, the beta position on the methyl group outside of the ring, and the beta position that contains the ethyl group. This structure is unreactive in E2 reactions because the bromine isn't coplanar with any beta hydrogens. If we chair flip this molecule, we get to the structure that has alpha position shown here. In this case, I've drawn in protons on the methyl group to help us with the reaction later. And then there's beta positions here, here, and here. Now in this case, there's one beta position in the ring that is coplanar with the bromine. There's one transdiaxial relationship shown here. 
There's also, though, a reactive beta position outside of the ring, and you don't want to forget about those. The protons on the methyl group here could easily get into the same plane as the bromine attached to the ring, so don't forget about beta positions that are outside of the ring. With the strong base deprotonating the beta position in the ring, we can get to this alkene product that has the double bond between the two methyl groups. The other possibility is the strong base could deprotonate the beta position outside of the ring, and that would lead to the following product that has an exocyclic double bond. These are the two possible alkene products in this reaction. Notice there's not a possible product that has a double bond between the ethyl group and the methyl group. That's because the ethyl group is occupying the axial position in this chair conformation, and this beta position Position won't be able to react because the ethyl group is always blocking the reactive beta position. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.